What's up guys, Hokeybird here, and today I'm bringing you something a little different than what I normally do. Instead of a new walkthrough or a new School of Halo series, I've decided to address a question I get asked a whole hell of a lot, and that question is, Hokey, when are you going to post the next video? Well, this is an interesting question, and its answer isn't entirely straightforward, so in an attempt to answer it, I'm going to show you just how much work goes into each video that I produce by showing you what it takes to make a proper game walkthrough. So, let's get started. Step 1. Equipment. In order to make a game walkthrough, you're going to need some equipment to get your gameplay from the screen of your personal TV in your living room or your family room, or in my case, my bedroom, onto the internet. To do this, you're going to need a capture card. Listen up, people. We are in the 2010s, and capture cards have been around for years at this point. Aiming a video camera at your screen while you play is unacceptable, both in terms of the quality of the picture and the quality of the audio. You need to get yourself a capture card. Now you've got a couple of different options when it comes to capture cards. Basically, you have to figure out how much you want to spend versus how good you want the quality of your videos to be. You can go as low as a Dazzle for around $50, but that won't give you HD videos. That's going to give you a maximum of 480p. You can also go as high as a Blackmagic Intensity Pro, and that will give you 1080p videos, but it's going to cost you around $250. In my case, I use a Hopog HD PVR, which is about $200, and it gives me 720p. So now that you've got your capture card, you can capture video. But unless you're planning on uploading just raw, uncut, unedited video, which is a horrible idea, you will need some video editing software. Now again, you've got a bunch of different options on what you can choose from, but I can tell you this. All of the video editing freeware out there is crap. Windows Live Movie Maker and Windows Movie Maker are both garbage, and all of the other freeware out there is self-developed, independent, third-party crapware. You need to plan on shelling out some money on professional video editing software if you're planning on making decent videos. Now, in my case, I have Vegas Movie Studio HD Platinum 11. Yeah, it's a mouthful, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper than Vegas Pro, which is going to run you several hundred dollars unless you pirate it. I didn't say that don't pirate stuff. Now, the third and final piece of equipment that you're going to need is going to be a microphone. Unless you're planning on uploading videos that have no commentary, you need to get a mic. In my case, I just use the headset that I use for my games, which is a Turtle Beach Ear Force X12 wired headset pictured here. Now, my mic may not be the best quality out there, but it works for me. Again, like your capture card, you just have to figure out how much money you want to spend versus how good you want the quality of your audio to be. Alright, so now that we've got the most expensive step out of the way, we can move on to step two, which is the step that 90% of people on YouTube skip, which is to play the goddamn game. Seriously, in order to make a quality walkthrough, you need to sink a lot of hours into the game to figure out its quirks and what makes it tick. I've seen way too many walkthroughs of people that are embarrassingly bad at the game because they didn't actually bother to learn how to play it. Which brings me to another important point, and I want everyone to hear me loud and clear on this one. Having fun playing through a game is fine, but it isn't a walkthrough. It's a let's play. I, however, do not make Let's Plays, or at least not when it comes to Halo. I mean, I know I have a few play sessions of Minecraft and Borderlands on my channel, as well as my I'm a Legend montage, but those were just for fun. They aren't my primary focus. Now, the reason that I make Halo walkthroughs is because I've been playing Halo since 2005. I know Halo inside and out, which is why I'm able to come up with such effective strategies. Believe me, guys, I died just as much as you guys when I first picked up Halo. For example, here's a clip of a game I'm not so good at. This is a clip of me attempting to play through the first mission, the easiest one, of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on veteran difficulty. As you can see, it ain't pretty. And this is why you will never see a Noob's Guide to Veteran video on my channel. I mean, even if I did spend the time learning how to be good at Call of Duty, I just don't enjoy playing it. 
the only strategies that I can discern are rote memorization and quick reflexes, which after years and years and years of Hango are unbearably simplistic and boring to me. But in the case of Hango, it intrigued me as to how the enemies could be so strong on the harder difficulties, and at the same time you could be so weak, and yet it was supposedly possible to get through the game like this. So over the years I began analyzing difficult encounters such as the Savo Highway Phantoms and the first tower encounter on Hango in Combat Evolved, and seeing if I could approach them differently that made them easier to handle. And hence, we have the Noob's Guide. And I call it the Noob's Guide not because I'm the noob, it's because a noob should be able to follow the strategies that I'm demonstrating. So now that you're good enough at the game to actually teach people how to play it, it's time to show everybody what you can do. So step three of the walkthrough making process is going to be to record your gameplay. This is relatively straightforward. Press record on your computer, hop over to your Xbox, and play the mission. Now keep in mind for Hango, this can take upwards of an hour. Now thanks to the theater mode, I don't have to record while I'm playing. I can just go back into the theater mode and then record the run that I want there. Now keep in mind, it can still take a lot of time to get that perfect run that you're satisfied with. And in the case of Hango, making a mistake doesn't necessarily mean dying. It more often than not means that you picked up the wrong weapon and you die over and over and over again because you're improperly equipped. But once you've got a perfect run that you're satisfied with, then you can move on to step four, and that's video editing. And I'll be honest with you, this is probably the least fun step of the walkthrough making process, but it is probably the most important step besides step two, and it needs to be done to make a decent video. So. Here I have my video of me playing through the last mission of Hango 3, and first I start by trimming off the ends of the video to make it start when the mission starts and end at the end of the last cutscene before you see any load screens or menus. Next I locate any deaths or places where I reverted to a checkpoint and edit them out. Now I do this for two reasons, and it's not to make me seem better at the game than I actually am. The one reason I do it is because it helps the game seem more cinematic, and two, it's absolutely no fun to watch me die over and over and over again trying to get through an encounter. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I were watching the video, I would just skip around anyway until I found the place where he made it through, instead of watching him die over and over. So I just do that to save you guys the trouble. Usually there aren't too many deaths in my videos, especially in the case of Hago 3. And in fact, in this mission, there aren't any at all. I managed to do the entire thing without dying once. Now, I won't go into the tricks and techniques that I use to make the edited out sections look smooth, but all you have to know is that sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's not. Especially when you come across those sections of the game where if you die and revert to a checkpoint, the music either stops completely or picks up in a completely different spot than it left off. And for this reason, sometimes if I die in a certain spot in a mission, I will consider that run ruined and I have to start all the way over from the beginning. But assuming that doesn't happen, then once you finish editing the video, you could render and upload it as is, but if you want the video to actually help people, you're going to need to explain what you're doing as you play by adding commentary. Now, some of my earliest videos aren't like this, but starting at about my Hangle Combat Evolved Anniversary walkthrough, and including this video, you'll find that all of my videos are very articulate and contain absolutely no verbal flubs. Does this mean that I'm a very articulate person? Well, no, it actually means the opposite. Here's a sample of me doing some of the commentary work for this video. In order to make a proper game walkthrough, you're going to need some equipment to get your gameplay from the screen of your personal TV in your living room or your filming room, or in my case, my bedroom on the internet. Oh god, I'm flubbing my words. Let's try that again. Okay, in order to make it... oops. In order to make a proper game walkthrough, you're going to need some equipment to get your personal... personal... oh god damn it. In order to make a pr oh, it, let's try that again. In order to wow, but didn't get very far that time either. In order to make a proper game walkthrough, you're gonna need some equipment to get your TV. God damn it. 
In order to make a proper game walkthrough, you're going to need some equipment to get your gameplay from the screen of your personal TV in your living room or your family room, or in my case, my bedroom on the internet. Internet. God damn it. As you can see, it can sometimes take me 10 takes to say a single line clearly and to my satisfaction. Now, adding a commentary to a video like this usually takes several hours of work, but the problem with that is that if you take a break and decide to come back later, like the next day, you're going to find that your voice sounds completely different. Kind of like this, and this can be noticeable in the finished video. So this is why it can take so long to finish a video, because I have to find a day in my schedule where I can spend a solid four to six hours of doing nothing but commentary. The other difficult thing about adding commentary, at least for my videos, is that I can't just make it up as I go. I can't just tell you what's happening as the video's playing, you can already see that. I need to tell you exactly what tactics you need to utilize and why. After all, when you're playing, your situation will vary slightly from mine, so I need to tell you what you need to know in order to get through it when I can't play for you. As you may be able to imagine, this is not easy. I also sometimes run into problems when I'm still trying to explain something, but the gameplay's moved on, and then you miss the explanation of the next encounter. This is what started the whole Hokies School of Halo series. Now, what sets me apart from others is that I do my absolute best to not talk over dialogue in the game. Sometimes I have to, but usually I can find a way to adjust when I'm speaking in order to not talk over anyone. After all, I want you guys to experience everything that the game has to offer. I want you guys to love this game and go out and buy it if you don't already have it. And if you're missing dialogue, it kind of ruins that experience. So once I've finally finished editing the video and adding my commentary, the one final step in the video making process is to review the video to catch any mistakes that I missed. This means watching the video from start to finish in one sitting. Once I'm satisfied, the video is finished. All I have to do is render and upload it. And the nice thing about these last two steps is that they're set it and forget it type of deals. It takes approximately two and a half hours for me to render an hour long video on my computer with the settings that I use, but I don't have to be around for those two and a half hours. I can start a video rendering, go to work, and have it ready for me by the time I get back. And then after I render the video, all I have to do is upload it. Now, I'm not sure if you guys were able to tell from the video, but this process of making a video takes about 30 hours worth of work from start to finish. When I have to balance that with school, work, and just regular household maintenance, it means that it can sometimes take two or three weeks between videos, and sometimes even longer if I just don't feel like playing Halo. So, I hope you now understand just how much work goes into making my videos and that you'll stop constantly asking me where the next video is. Even if I bothered to answer, which I usually won't, the answer will always be that it'll be up when it's finished. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll occasionally get updates about my progress on the next video so you can get a rough estimate of how long it'll be before it's finished. So I think that's going to wrap things up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And most importantly, I hope you'll stop asking me when the next video is. So that said, I'm Hokey Bird. And I'm out. See you later, guys.